Test, test. Alright, so this is a VOD review of Lamexis' Yorick game. It's Yorick versus Jin Top. Uh, first, we'll just talk about the matchup briefly. Uh, I sent you the notes, kind of just talk now, just to put it in voice. Uh, so, the advantage of this matchup is as a melee, you have higher base stats, uh, you have stronger all ends because of those base stats, uh, and you have higher movement speed. In general, melee tend to have between like 340 to 350 movement speed, ranged champions tend to have between like 325 to 340. Uh, it is a mental matchup, but once Jin does get his crit chance at attack speed, he'll speed up. Uh, but you won't have to worry about that for most of the game. Uh, your disadvantages in the matchup are going to be the fact that you're melee versus ranged, uh, which means if you don't respect your HP pool early on, he can poke you down. Uh, wave clear, his Q and W just outdoes your E, just plain and simple. Uh, in burst, his fourth shot and Q and W, blah blah blah, uh, can chunk you out early if you're not careful. Uh, whereas you win all ends with your E and ghouls. Uh, so your matchup goals. A, to stay healthy, you don't want to get poked out. B, you're looking for extended fights, so you're going to make sure the minions are on your side of the minion wave, so you can force fights with the E and W. Uh, and three is avoid dying to ganks. If you die to a gank, it can completely shift the lane, because uh, they can get an item advantage and you'll no longer even win the extended fights. You'll essentially be zoned off for a while. Uh, so for Bruins, uh, this game you took Conquer with Triumph, Tenacity. I understand the Tenacity, they got a Sona and a Mumu, but Tenacity doesn't do damage to towers. That said, it's preference. If you like it, more power to you. Uh, you took, I believe, Coup de Gras or Last Stand, one of them, both are fine. Uh, and for secondary, you took Conditioning and Overgrowth. So, Conquer is fine. You obviously can't proc Grasp in this matchup very often. And the one or two procs you'll get in an all-in don't nearly compare to how much stronger Conquer is going to be mid-game. Uh, so I completely agree with the Conquer choice. Now, for your secondary rune page, uh, there are three things I recommend. One is Second Wind. Uh, if he was poking you in this lane properly like he should have, uh, it could have been a lot harder to stay healthy enough to force an all-in. Uh, B is Demolish. A lot of times this game you'll find yourself rooting for tower plates. Uh, if you had Demolish, you would have gotten them right away. Uh, and later on in the split push, it'll help you take turrets faster. It really does make a big difference. It's like three Trinity Force procs. Uh, and lastly is Approach Velocity. You land your E, you sprint to them. Uh, they've got a team of mobile champions, uh, Sona with their speed, uh, Misfortune with their W speed, Zed with the shadows, Jin with his crit movement speed. Uh, Approach Velocity is also a nice option. I've been taking it on Trinity recently, and I've really been enjoying it. I also realized, if I'm talking too fast, I'm sorry about that, it's just how I normally talk once I have a script. Uh, so for starting items, crafting pot's pretty standard, nothing really wrong with it, gives you mana, uh, etc. But again, your main goal is to stay healthy, so Doran Shield and Reju Beads are both worth considering. Uh, I don't know how bad York's mana costs are, even when managing it, so I can't recommend Doran Shield and Reju Beads, but it is true that they give you more HP. Uh, so laning phase. Uh, let's skip through to the start. So here you guard your red buff more than fine. It's strange that you didn't start it, but more than happy to not have to give a leash. So he zones you off. Here, uh, I wouldn't typically re recommend going this way because if Jin was waiting in here, he could have popped you with an auto Q and then backed off. Uh, easily chunky you for over 100 HP. Uh, and it just makes staying healthy a little bit harder. That said, you weren't punished for it. But against a lot of champions, either that want to poke you down like ranged champions, or melees that excel at level 1 all-ins like Jax or Darius, or Akali. Uh, you're going to want to be really careful about face-checking this tribush. So, Link continues. So, for here, I would have been sitting in a bush. Uh, let's just see what happens. A, you can clear him out of it. Uh, if he isn't there, because the short engagement distance. Uh, not ideal, but you can. Uh, B, sitting in there keeps you safe from his auto. So, here you see him here. Uh, you realistically shouldn't be able to walk up here without eating an auto every time you try to auto back. Right there, you should have taken one auto. Uh, because when a ranged champion harasses you, they're dealing damage to you and pushing the wave at the same time. Because your minions stop autoing his minions and start trying to auto him. So his minions basically push faster than you. Uh, that said, he doesn't punish. Uh, and again, he just kind of stops auto attacking in general, so he's not punishing you. So it's really good of you to like take advantage of that uh, and get the push advantage. But again, once you get level 2 or level 3, you're not going to have to so it's just time to get to And again, he, like, he's autoing me instead of autoing you. But you can see here where it starts to hurt. So that's one auto. He could have just kept autoing me. It's like Shalagman, but he doesn't. Uh, again, so Rangers, uh, Rangers and Melee, you want to be able to uh, push you in. Uh, so two, you use your Q here. You only have three ghouls. And this gives them the ability to kill your ghouls before you level up your E. Typically, you'll want to get four minions level one with uh, turned into ghouls and ready to go. And then when you hit level 2, you instantly level up your E, hit him with it, then summon the 4 ghouls. Uh, it's a pretty standard strat for your... Uh, you can see he's 
starting to clear your holes, but you're basically not getting to the side of it. So now, when you, if you do find the land it needs, you can do. What's one more yeah, so you don't. Uh, but again, he should be killing your ghouls, but he's not. Uh, but now, yeah, you've got level advantage, but you have no room to run him down because he's pushed under tower. And you can also find that because you didn't push just barely fast enough, he throws out his turret. Uh, he didn't punish it well enough, but it could have made it very difficult for you to last hit without taking a lot of damage. Again, though, you're still full HP because he hasn't been moving you down, so it's fine. Uh, some important things to look at in the map. Uh, your jungler, you know you didn't have to leash, you need to search blue buff. You need to see if he's looking for a bot gank or if he's looking to come top lane. So if you look at your mini map, you see that uh, your master is on raptors. I wish you to know that he's either A, going to be looking for a top gank soon, or B, prop potentially looking to take scuttle. Just keep in mind what your jungler's doing. And also know that uh, the enemy jungler's likely doing the, uh, the same thing. So you saw that Jin didn't leash at the start of the game, which means Amun was likely working his way top. It's very common for junglers to cash, uh, clash at the first scuttle, or with a gank counter gank situation top or mid lane. Again, it's just something to consider. I didn't put it in the notes. Uh, but just looking at it now, it's just something to think about. So here you're going to get some nice damage. I get some nice little chunk there. But again, here you should be letting the wave push out. Like the turret's even helping push against you. All you need to do is sit back. You will learn what beauty truly is. Again, you can still get full HP here. There was a nice chunk on it, didn't I? I'm gonna speed it up a little bit and see what happens. Uh, typically, you don't want to go for uh, Walk of the Last unless something's happening. All right, so here's something I made it over in my notes. Uh, so, Meshi popped the Scryer's Bloom. It saw uh, a Mumu. Oh, I believe he popped the Scryer's Bloom. It saw a Mumu. So, you should have in your head, okay, the wave is pushing towards me. Uh, the wave is pushing towards me. If we both leave it alone, Jin is going to lose more than I am unless it crashes under my turret because my minions are dying faster. I want to be in position to win this 2v2. As a melee and arranged, you typically win fights where you aren't poked down first because of your uh, higher base stats. Uh, so situations like this are great for you. Uh, also, Master has pressed the attack, which because of the bonus uh, burst at the start and then the exposure damage, makes bursting down one person to be too very, very easy. Uh, so here, you can look to still keep it pushing toward you, you don't have to shove it out, but stand more towards the bottom side of the lane and just be aware that a fight for this scuttle might break out. Also, Master is probably going to push this uh, scuttle top side towards you, so if a move comes to contest here and Jin walks down and gives the ball this way for it, even though it's a bad decision for him, uh, you could very easily A, tilt your jungler uh, because he dies, and B, start to lose uh, grasp on your lane because then a move can come top lane after that, etc. But luckily, a move doesn't go for it. Uh, again, even after doing a strike here, like, I would be looking to walk down. You're standing on the very top side of your lane. You should be down here. Uh, just again, so you would help. But nothing happens of it, which is more than fine. Uh, but just something to consider. So here, Jin, because of the freeze, again, lost like two minion waves when he didn't even go to help. Basically throwing. But everyone makes mistakes. Uh, all you have to do now is just not look to fight while he has this huge minion advantage. Each caster or minion is worth about a long sword worth of stats because the auto is about the same rate as a champion, and it does ten damage per auto. So it's essentially adding 10 damage per your auto. Uh, but luckily, looking at the map, Mashi's coming up so for a gank. So you can hopefully, just quite some advantage. So here, uh, you look to land your E while he was casting his W, but you cast it too slowly, giving him time to sidestep. Jin gets movement speed whenever he groups somebody the same as if he lands a crit, so that lets him dodge it in time. Now you need to be more patient and wait for him to start running away. Uh, two good options A, you drop your wall immediately because it's significantly larger and much easier to hit. Uh, then you'll flash out of it, but you can follow up with your E. Or B, you wait for him to start running away, land your slow, then wall him afterwards. Uh, neither option is necessarily uh, right or wrong, but if you're too impatient with your abilities, then they won't even have anything to dodge. It's why Lee Sins, when they gank, typically ward jump in, drop their slow and E and shit like that, and wait for their Q for the end. Not just because it's an X Q, but because people are to start running in a straight line once they realize you're not throwing your skill shot, uh, which makes it easy in the end. So again, he flashes, you don't get anything out of it. And go over some minions to turret. So in this situation, uh, instead of killing the minions way back here, you need to be going under your turret and grabbing what you can there too. A, because I'm not even sure if you're in experience range of those melees, you potentially were it's quite large. Uh, but B, just more gold. There's no reason not to. Uh, even better is too is if you grab the minion aggro before it falls in the turret, you can create a freeze when he's already forced back. So moving on, you've got a 200 gold advantage this early into the game. It's actually quite huge. It's almost as good as gold. 
But again, the lane is reset, you don't have any Q stacks. So right now you're just looking to let it push towards you as you go to the ghouls. So that's two ghouls ready. Uh, something on your hand is four ghouls just do so much more damage than three ghouls because by the time they kill the three ghouls in a normal situation they stop taking damage. With four ghouls by the time they kill the three there was been another ghoul that was hitting them the entire time. Easily at end of 15 or 16 damage. So here you need to wait to look for a trade until after the cannon minion. You did have a chance uh, to take the cannon minion before this. Again, like I said, you need to wait for the quick token of you, but you walk up into a situation. So here, uh, right in this moment. This time I saw it. It's a very micro decision, but your highest priority for last hit needs to be A, cannons. Always choose a cannon over a melee range. B is melee, it's always pick a melee over a range. Because uh, it gives 50% more, uh, more gold. 21 gold versus 14. Uh, it adds up. Two melees is worth three casters, etc. Uh, and then lastly, casters, if you got no other choice, you can a lot of time to shit like that. Uh, so, by walking up the CS, you can get poked down before you go to all in. Uh, the only time, I think only twice, he ought to be when you're the CS. So in this situation, you're walking up, meet the first shot anyways, just auto Q, the Q's off cooldown, just auto Q the cannon. Uh, instead, you go for the caster, so you essentially deny yourself a cannon because you go for a fight right afterwards. So again, it's a good all in, it just basically this kill is worth 300 gold less, or 80 gold less than it could have been. So because you gave it the cannon, you only got 220 gold from this kill instead of 300. Because it's like a... What was the word? Uh, cost... I don't remember the word, but basically, by doing some one thing, you give up another and you have to weigh the pros and cons. Uh, so something else in this all-in is whenever you cage somebody, while they're stuck in that spot, same with any CC, you want to be walking between them and their escape route, that way you can squeeze one or two more off. Like you land a jack stun, a ribbon stun, a Darius pole, etc. So you're you bend slow, great. You know, the cage great. Uh, you get rooted, but then here you can see that you just stand still while you're autoing him, when you could have been rooted him in this escape route. It didn't end up mattering, but it could have. Uh, it's a good habit to build. Again, though, I'm not going to preach too much on the little things. Uh, but laning phase is my specialty when looking for mistakes, so there's little things that I try to point out. So, here's something else I noticed when I was uh, going over it, is so you get this kill, and the first thing I do after I get a kill is take a look at where the wave is. Uh, first, is it pushing to me or away from me? If it's pushing to me, I don't even have to shove, because I can just recall and let it freeze for me and collect it when I get back. Unless I'm like about to have a night of swipe, like if I'm at 1200 gold out of 1375 or 1325 for Tiamat, then obviously you have to get more gold before you back. But it can provide them a lot of gold that you are going to see. Uh, it's also very common to use the champs if they don't always have high wave clear again. But here, so you just get the kill. The mini wave's just coming out of base. Uh, this is a big green light to uh, for you to have to push immediately. Uh, ideally, Master Yi would come top lane and help you push, but he doesn't. You don't ping for it. He doesn't ping for it. Uh, it's just something either of you are thinking about. So here, your E is coming off cooldown real quick. It's an AOE ability. You need to be dropping this on all six minions. Uh, it's the same with the Rowe W or Rowe stun. Uh, Jack's Counter Strike, etc. If you don't need to be scared of the jungler coming top, which you don't because you have a large minion wave and you're over half HP, uh, use all of your abilities to shove this in ASAP. Uh, you can see because there are times where you wait to auto uh, or stuff like that, you don't get it all the way shoved under. So while here, like, I see you attempt to reset, but you realize that it's not going to push in in time because you push it too slowly. So instead of being able to spell your 1300 gold, which is a phase, it's a ninja tabby, uh, it's a sheen and a long sword, etc., you're not able to uh, get a good reset off. Here, you realize that even though he's walking the lane, he's probably at like the tier 2 by now. He's getting there. Uh, you still haven't been able to reset. And there's those very little things that add up into big advantages. So you get the last Q. And now in your head, even though you're full HP, even though you're still half mana, even though you can technically stay in lane, he went back to base and bought more stats. Uh, even if you're a level up, it only about evens out the difference now. You're sitting on 1500 gold that doesn't do anything for your inventory. You need to be looking for a reset. You absolutely don't have the damages early in the game. You have like 70 attack damage. You have 83 attack damage. You're not going to be taking this turret plate anytime soon. Just go back to base, reset, get that done. Uh, instead, you stay, and again, like, this would be a reason to demolish should be nice, because it would make it a little bit easier. Uh, you still would barely get it if that. Just said, uh, you stay, you waste a lot of time just walking around doing nothing, uh, 
do get a little bit of nice chip damage on there, but it's not as important. And instead of getting a good back timing off and just being able to walk back to lane, you realize what went wrong, and you have to stay. So again, the way he's pushing away from you, it's very fortunate that you can't punish you right now. You at level 6, and I believe you use your ult here to wait for Which again, isn't the worst idea in the world, because the next minion wave's coming up, you need to get the shift done or ASAP. But, just not back in the beginning with this, really rough. So again, after you get a kill, look to reset as many bolts as possible. Make sure you check the minion wave to know how fast you have to push the wave. Uh, or if you have to push it at all. If it's pushing towards you, you typically don't, especially if they don't have TP. Here, the next minion wave showed up. Oh, yeah, something else I mentioned uh, in my notes. Let me see. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, minion wave for the potential skirmish. Got a solo kill. Push. Here, this tad advantage for spending gold. I'm sorry, I'm going over my notes. Uh, because we weren't able to get it back off. Oh, yeah. Uh, so here, you set it up to pull another all on you. Let him push towards you, which is what you want to do in a melee versus sure magic. You're at half mana. And you've still bought no items. You've got no crafting pot charges. Uh, now you're down to 70 mana. Uh, even if you hit him with an E here, you want high mana for a wall. You want mana for a few, etc. So we'll see. Uh, here, you want E. You don't even have mana for Q, anything. And then you're just not able to get the kill. If you had wall, if you had mana for anything, if you'd reset more damage, uh, you could have continued to snowball this matchup. But because of that, you're only at 40, uh, 45 farm to his 30. And it's not because you've been missing a bunch of CS, although you missed something there. It's just because you haven't put yourself in a position to keep him there. So even though he's got a death, he's still able. So again, you reset, and you realize that the wave is pushing away from you because of the situation you put yourself in. And even though Jin uses his Q in the last hit and tries his best to get the freeze, uh, it's still pushing away from you. Uh, that puts you in a situation where you have to TP back to lane to avoid being denied farm or shit like that. Uh, again, their misfortune has no flash. Uh, like Not even like she burned it, she just doesn't have flash to begin with, she took TP and heal. So TP plays bot lane and you all are going to be very, very effective. Uh, having to burn your TP like this gets rid of a lot of the potential map impact you could have. Could have. Uh, and then as soon as you get back to lane, you start shoving in. Uh, this is the right call. Uh, because it's pushing away from you, you just need to reset off your tower. Uh, any tower damage you can get any time is nice, but it's uh, not the priority. The priority is not to piss off. Something else to know is that you bought a Sapphire Crystal, and I explained it in notes, but basically until you fall below how much money you bought, it effectively doesn't do anything. Like, uh, the of the body, it's, it's one of the reasons it makes it a good spike for Ezreal. So here you get a shuffle in, you need to be looking to drop a ward ASAP just like you did level 2, especially because you got a control ward. If you drop it now, you have permanent vision, and you'll know that he doesn't have vision. Uh, but instead I believe you waited for like a full another minute before you can drop a normal ward, which is like 2-3 waves, uh, which puts you in a tough spot. Uh, also, whenever you push in you're waiting for it to bounce off, take that time to walk down, get wards in river, uh, ward in the enemy jungle, uh, just do anything, because essentially right now, there is no difference between you walking around back here and you sitting in the bush AFK. Uh, it's as if you've frozen the wave uh, and you've basically taken yourself off the map. Even just disappearing in the fog of war here makes Jin have to question mark ping it. And against better players, the Zed would have to play back, etc. York doesn't have the best roams, but just the threat of you being out of the lane, potentially in his jungle, is enough to have an impact on the map. But again, there's the argument that they're not looking at their map to begin with, but it's just something to consider. You get in here. I'm just looking to recall it. Could have taken two tower shots there. Uh, just having the ghoul up makes it so difficult to let it push back to you. So luckily here, one caster survived. So as long as you don't affect the wave, it's here. It's to you. Uh, but again, you start autoing the mini wave. Something I made a note of is you were uh, from a push from the gym. Uh, so, basically what I was saying uh, regarding that is you lose all the pressure on him if you haven't pushed him because he's safe under his tower, but you can't run him down. Brain melee characters can't harass people under tower like ranged characters can but, uh, because they can't play it in another tower range. If someone's sitting right next to the tower, they kind of have to commit. Uh, there are exceptions with mobile characters like Riven and Kinnan that can get tower quickly. Uh, Jack's walking up to you, stunning W and queuing out, etc. But on an immobile character like Joy, you can so the trade-off between uh, pushing and not having kill pressure on them is that you have full priority. 
at any moment here. You can go into the enemy's training after shoving them in. You can roam down and get Scuttle. You can take Rift Herald, uh, etc. These are the kind of things you need to be looking for if you want to have a higher impact on the map. Uh, nice part of keeping your as well is that Jim has been baiting himself into farming with his abilities in the tower, but he's out of mana now. Uh, as long as you can keep him shoved in, in lane, he won't be able to really help the 2v2 situation. Uh, this kind of situation is great to start looking for Rift Herald. Uh, even though it's just 10 minutes, uh, you still have a lot of pressure on it. I think almost any champion you can take Rift Herald just off of uh, the eye alone in like 30 seconds. And especially because this is a cannon wave, you'd have plenty of time to do it. He's out of mana, it's cannon wave, he's nice. So at this point, you've kind of conceded that like I'm not trying to kill you. Like It might be in your head that you want to kill him, but you don't know how to make that kind of space. So he's at 55 farm to your 83 farm. Again, too, you mentioned your CS. Your CS is fine. You're averaging 8.5 CS per minute. Uh, that's fine. Uh, the time it's going to hurt you, I can tell, is going to be later on. Once you start finding side lane farm, etc. And there's a part later on where you didn't reset the wave, and that also hurts. Uh, we'll talk about that when we get there. Uh, so here, and you're paying attention to the map because you're not doing anything here. This is the kind of situations where you're kind of okay just watching the map. You should see him in the bot lane. Uh, this is kind of like a green flag that you can go for Rift Herald at 10 minutes. Uh, instead, I don't think you took a chance to find it uh, to go for it at all this game, and I think I'm going to end up grabbing and dropping a bot lane. You will learn what beauty truly is. Again, again, even though he's out of mana and you could be punishing him, you're not. You're kind of just letting him AFK farm, and you're still building up farm lead. You've got a thousand more lead on him, and just one kill, which is great. Uh, but it's unfortunate. So again, you can tell he resets here, so right after you shove this in, you could either look for a Rift Herald or look for a reset yourself. Something to spend the 1500 for. Uh, if you stay in lane, basically subtract 1500 gold from the 4000 you have, and you're only sitting on 2500 gold worth of stats. Uh, whereas he's going to come back to lane with 2700 gold worth of stats. So even though you're ahead in farm, you're going to be behind in items. Uh, you can see here he buys a BF sword. That can lead to you losing fights later. You want to try to match recalls to your opponent, that way you can continue to abuse your gold advantage. Let me take a moment to pause this, scroll down to my notes so I can keep going. Alrighty, uh, one second. It's gonna be really tragic if this isn't recording my voice. Uh, do do do, wording, talked about that. Alright. Uh, I believe you burned it. Oh, yeah. Actually, let me check. Sorry, I'll just get back. I'm gonna notice something I didn't talk about. Oh yeah, so here you burn Jin's Flash, but you don't ping it in all chat. Uh, timestamps plus summoner pings are really important for keeping track of certain things. Uh, but you can see like Amumu's Flash, Zed's Flash again. This is them pinging themselves because you can see the timer right next to it. Uh, but those little things can be a green light, like, hey, if you ping your enemy lane to Flash, that's a green light, you're a jungler that income top lane. Uh, or it's a green light you, you could be like, okay, well, this Flash isn't going to be up until 1430 because it's a five minute cooldown. If I land the wall within the next five minutes, he cannot get out. And it's those kind of things you need to be looking for to push advantages. Or like, even if he's under tower, if I land a wall and him while he's under tower, he can't kite me around tower. Uh, it kind of opens up situations where you can dive, etc. All right, I'm going to skip back forward. And I believe around nine minutes. And again, I think I'm able to be careful. Uh, but you stay too long, um, you can see like you're losing these fights. You can the game much more. You no longer have the advantage of your so you feel like you can find the items. Uh, this kind of situation you need to be looking for a, uh, a disengage from. Luckily, you all got a dragon, but it wasn't ocean dragon. Uh, so it doesn't have as high of an impact. Or won't later on for you specifically because you're kind of all in oriented. Uh, there's the argument that split pushing is kind of hit around and give you range if you get poked down and I hope you sustain that, but it's not. Uh, so, again, here it doesn't have flash. By the skin of your teeth, just again, because when you strengthen the match, you have stronger signatures, even with the item disadvantage. Him having 170 attack damage to your 130, you win this all in. Uh, that's just the power of the going to as well as your conquer. So you win that, about 200 HP. Uh, on your map, you can see a Mumu back off, so he's not able to path up this way. This is another situation where you want to look to shove this in before you go. Uh, but you don't, 
potentially because you're scared of a Moomoo -moo because you heard the Rift Charlton go off, but you didn't see Ard uh, counter Moomoo, -moo, uh, etc. Luckily, your Maiden pushes in for you. This is one of the disadvantages I was talking about in the Discord, though. Uh, you'll see after it kills your pets, it targets schools first. It targets pets in general first, and once all your schools are dead, it's going to target your Moomoo. -moo. Although he's not here to capitalize it off of it, if this was a cannon wave, uh, the Maiden and the cannon enough would have been enough for him to collect all this way. I believe he gets here like right. Oh, that was a mistake. Oh, do, do, do. I believe he gets here. I don't know. He took way too long to shot. Uh, something else to note is although you don't have to every game, rushing tier 2 boots into range is a good way to help make up for the uh, range disadvantage as well. That said, you wouldn't have had enough gold for Trinity Force if you did. But now, again, this is your Trinity Force spike. This is when you're strongest. Uh, you need to be making a shit like right now. So here you can let him push out. It's very clear to you that the wave is pushing towards you, I can tell. Uh, if you land an E here, he's got no flash for another about 30 seconds or so. Uh, if you had been keep track of his flash, you could have known that. Just landing a wall would have been more than enough to kill him. Uh, but you don't. Like here, if you just land a wall, he's dead. Uh, again, I'd probably get the cannon first. So you just kind of got too wrapped up on just the caster minions and lost the chance to kill him. You also don't know where Mumu is, that all units there as well. Uh, it turns out he's bot side, but honestly, I don't have too much uh, right now talking. No, for sure. But again, you can see the power that you have here. Uh, let me skip that. Because you should have had a chance to see him here. He's pushing towards you. Counts off your tower. I didn't analyze this too much, I started speeding up the look at the after decisions, because that turret plays fall. Right, so you land your E, ah, you land over the crap. You still land the stuff. Oh, okay. So again, if you had kept walking between him and his escape path, uh, the same thing I mentioned earlier, uh, you potentially could have gotten a kill here. Uh, also, Q, let me watch. Sorry about going back over this. This is kind of a micro thing, uh, but it's something to look for if you want to climb is to look for chances to get advantages over your opponent. So let me walk over your trap, which is tragic. Uh, again, if you had a post velocity, you would have gotten faster. Uh, what did you use your Q on? I must be blind. I stopped looking for it again. If you don't get it, that works. Who's up? Oh, you used your Q on this melee minion. Uh, so that was probably an attack move issue. Uh, that cost you a lot of damage because that was one turn you first. That was probably like 300 damage. Let's see how much your next does. Yeah, so that was like 200, 300 damage you missed there. Uh, that combined with walking between him and his escape path, you could have easily gotten the kill there. Uh, unluckily though, you don't. Fortunate. But again, you can shove this in, look at something on the map. Uh, at this point in time though, your focus is shifting from killing him, even though you just need to fight, over to putting pressure on the map. You need to identify where is the next big objective that's going to come up, and do will I have TP for it. Uh, the next big objective is going to be Cloud Drake, which again isn't too much of a priority. It really does help with splitting, because it makes you that combat is nice. Uh, but there's nothing like an infernal for a winning fight to remount Drake for taking towers. It's kind of just uh, a rotation dragon. This side is still obviously good. Uh, the ocean is probably my least favorite with them all, but even as a place. Uh, there you hit him with probably your ear or ghoul, so you took tower damage. Uh, cost about half your HP. Here, you can, if you hadn't taken that much damage, you would have been able to get two or three more cubes on the tower. Here, he flashes up again. He flashes away even though he doesn't have to. Again, you can ping it and mark it. Uh, so I believe coming up here is a gank, gank by me. Uh, your more distance fires, which is lucky. Again, you still have that same control world you bought seven minutes ago in your inventory. If you had that in the river, you would have been able to spend a safe Oh, turn So, I'm going to walk up, figuring that you walk away. Very fortunate that your Nashi was here to counter game. Good job dodging the shots. He commits, smash you, comes, easy to not to Like, it's not even a joke. I mean, like, it's not even a question. Uh, that's just an easy fight. So he lives, you guys get the tower here. Very good. Uh, so here, always try to make sure that you kill the next mini wave. Because you can see, again, uh, if you're aware where your mini wave is on the map, uh, is where theirs is, it's... 
kind of common sense, but most people don't think about it, like a lot of the things in League. Uh, once you learn it, it's very important to keep track So your wave freeze is just outside this turret. Again, to your maiden being here. Kind of does help reset the wave, but it's not enough, and it'll soak up damage so that they can gather the CS. I'm not a huge fan of just leaving it in the wave. It also guarantees that it dies instead of continuing to follow you around, even though the cooldowns. I believe that's because it's still alive. Uh, so moving on, yeah. if you had to reset this, uh, the minion wave would have bounced back towards you and you would have been able to collect a lot of farm or your aid carry someone later. But instead you leave it frozen for them, denying you and your team some more gold later on. Uh, that's one of the big reasons I'm pro-play when has such high farm is because they're bouncing the wave like that. Uh, so again, uh, not a good. So, uh, something to think about. You never want to TP to the lane you're splitting in. There is zero rush to go there, uh, especially if you had reset this minion wave. You'd have had some time to get something done. Uh, in an ideal situation, I'd be pathing mid. Uh, that way, if something happens to the map, I can get to it. Cloud Drake's coming up, uh, and I want to be able to save my TP for Baron, uh, which is sooner than six minutes. TP has a six minute cooldown. You typically don't want to use it uh, after 14 minutes because you won't have it ready when Baron spawns. Uh, so you're going to be walking mid. This wave would be bouncing off this turret. You could gather it later, or someone else on your team could gather it later. And once uh, Cloud Drake's taken care of, and you'll be near enough for it, because now you have no impact over it. Uh, once Cloud Drake's taken care of, you can go and rotate into a bot split to start taking these outer towers, which are much safer to take than this tower or further down this tower. Uh, and when Baron spawns, if you continue to split bot, you can make pressure down here. Uh, that said, you TP to lane. Red oh yeah, that's right. They had a girl down here because they were finding use for it. Uh, TP to lane, and you're kind of stonewalled in the same position you were at before. Uh, where it was just kind of perma pushing into him, and you weren't really getting anything done on the map, so you were essentially AFK. So right now you're kind of, it's like you guys shook hands and kind of like a farm agreement, like, hey, let's both just farm up. Uh, that's if you do still have a huge farm lead, but it could be bigger. Uh, so again here, uh, something else to note is you don't have to respect this damage completely when you're this far ahead. You can literally walk him to start hitting the tower. Uh, typically if I plan on doing that, I ward over the wall here. Uh, and that would cover like a Moomoo -moo queuing over the wall and stuff like that. No, it's just something to I typically only do it against tanks. So here you see a Moomoo -moo here, and you're like, okay, shit, cool. Uh, you got two people top lane, Cloud Drake's up. I'd probably be pinging for this and saying I'm going to top. Uh, but it doesn't look like communicating with the team that much. Uh, here's nice. You get the uh, drop on a Moomoo. -moo. Uh, unfortunately, you just time to do. Oh, something else is coming back. Uh, I'm sorry about the back again. I didn't put this in the notes, but I believe right here, it literally pings her on the map that she's running away. If you turn here and use this Blast Clone, you can collapse on her before it even happens, uh, before a fight even breaks out. But you weren't watching your map and you didn't see misfortune, uh, you were only focused on getting there. Uh, it's unfortunate, uh, but neither your Varus was pinging or you were looking at your map. Uh, but this works out for you. Uh, you don't have your ult, unfortunately, because you left your name to die in lane area. Uh, but this works out really well. Varus for some big damage. Uh, you help clean up. Uh, so you guys already got two picks, and you can easily transition this into a mid dive. You guys can on move. This is great. Like, this is what you want to be doing. If you group up with the team more when you have a lead like this, like, there's no rule that says you can't group up. Because uh, I remember you were talking about perma pushing earlier. Uh, this is how you continue to build leads. Like, again, you guys continue to wipe this up because the mid lane is almost dead. You could literally just walk in and keep it. Um, case on the queue. If you stop the con wolves, you guys And I was saying to myself, okay, this is a free game, but I was really happy when you want to take it. As soon as the same move goes down, in my head, I'm like, okay, this game's over. Uh, but you threw, no offense to you, you threw a couple times, which locked all y'all in. Uh, another thing too, I was talking about your wall being like trumpet filler. Not only can you interrupt misfortune ult, you can interrupt an ult, uh, gin ult just by dropping. Right here, you guys can hit and in my head I'm like, okay, instantly reset, there's nothing else you're getting off this push. Uh, they all had potential to get the dragon after and ask you guys to reset because it's low HP. So here, reset. My first thought is, okay, you're going bot lane. It is very unfortunate that you TP the lane earlier, because now you won't have TP up when Baron spawns in a minute. And that, that was the first big throw, the TPing to the uh, lane, macro-wise. Uh, second big throw, A, you spent super long to buy in base. Why is this not dragging? Okay. Uh, you spent super long to buy in base, trying to decide what you're going to get. Uh, I would have sold the uh, crafting pot at this point, probably, just to buy another 1,000 gold item. 
uh, maybe even just a giant spell, something like that. Ruby crystal, probably a giant spell, just because it's a thousand gold I can spend right there now. Uh, but you get the idea. Uh, here, you should be splitting bot lane. You have a minion, uh, minion him down. It's essentially like you're splitting mid lane because of the super minions. Uh, now you want to be making pressure opposite of the most important objective. And Baron is by far way more important than Cloud Drake. Like, it's not even a contest. So, by grooming up with your team and doing what y'all just did to get that mini nib, you can get this Cloud uh, Drake. And then y'all can either transition that if it's a one fight right into a Baron, or you can uh, transition that to a bottom slip push if, say, they don't fight you for it. Start making pressure that way. And with a Mass GE and Vars uh, with their percent HP damage, and sadly, Malzar doesn't have the Andres yet, but if he had that too, y'all could shred Baron. Like, no contest. Uh, that said, here, you split away from your team without TP, and you kind of leave them to their own devices, and like, they leave just turn into a Might be a Okay. Uh, so yeah, they Steel Dragon and Kill Mass G. If you had grouped up with your team there, uh, instead of being way down here, you'd be way down here. Uh, there's a high chance it would have gone better for y'all. Uh, that said, unfortunate with everyone's back timings, but... It should be worse. So here, you're split pushing top lane, right? You're right next to Baron. They can contest you and Baron at the exact same time. You're putting pressure in a spot where there's already pressure. Uh, not just that, but you splitting top means that your AD carry has to split bot or else he can't farm. Because if everyone's grouped at once, uh, the bot lane is not being farmed and the gold is being wasted. Uh, so you put your AD carry away from the objective and you put the strongest person on your team right next to the objective. So you're not able to uh, pressure properly and split them up from where they want to be. Right here, four people can group up right here, contest you and Baron at the same time. And then you squeeze in some damage. They defend. You back away. And here you have to be thinking like, their whole team is probably around Baron. I don't need to push mid. Uh, I already saw two top lane. Uh, if we all go bot lane, we lose Baron. So you kind of just hang back and chill. Again, you should be bot lane right now. I'd probably be telling you if I was in game with you, hey, go bot. Uh, but because you were sparing, uh, teleport your time. So again, you start working your way bot lane. Uh, you take a scrub. It's like, again, you kind of realize your mistake. Uh, but now your whole team's bot. Realistically, they can just Baron. Uh, maybe they don't have the damage for it. They do it. Yeah, they have, yeah, they don't have the damage for it. So that's not too much of a concern. Uh, here, your Malzar got way too far ahead, and y'all weren't reading it. Uh, so Malzar is great for getting picks. Uh, here, he was lagging way too far behind, and he waited in the push. He shouldn't have. He's eventually essentially one v three, and y'all are pushing the wave. Uh, but once you get this pushed in, uh, y'all need to be kind of like reading that Malzar is this far ahead and that Malzar has ult uh, in walking this way. But you were all just kind of tunneled on the turret. If you had been walking forward here and seeing it, you could easily eat him caged him well before this. Uh, worst case scenario, you blow his flash. And then he doesn't have flash hope for later in the fight. Uh, but now it's turned because you retrieved so far to take the turret and kind of abandon your team. Uh, Malzar gets chunked out hard and happy. And here, uh, because you already used your wall, you can't interrupt Misfortune ult. And then here you abandon Varus when he gets ulted by Zed. Takes a lot of damage. So, not you personally, like obviously their decisions matter too, but you could have prevented the death of Nazar, you could have killed Amumu sooner, you could have prevented the death of Varus. Or at the very least, you wouldn't have had an easy flash this game. So here, y'all two for two got one tower, but y'all were so far ahead that you didn't have to take a loss like that. And now here, I'm like, okay, the fight's over. They've got two people defending it. I'd honestly probably call for a Baron right now, uh, because we have Bork and percent HP damage, uh, while their bot lane and mid's pushed in and before they respawn, because their jungle's dead and their mid's gonna be dead for another 30 seconds. Uh, but even then, if I'm not going for a Baron, I'd be resetting. Because once my team respawns, I need to be ready to move out the base with them. If I wait too long to recall, they're going to be alive, walking out of the base. I'm going to have just been recalled, and then there's a chance a fight breaks out before I get back onto the map. Because, again, it's slowly learning. You can't anticipate what they're doing. You can't expect them to wait for you. So you need to be thinking a step ahead and making these decisions ahead of time. And then you kind of linger around. Uh, then you realize they need to reset. It takes you a long time. 
Uh, you all eventually get out of there, you reset. Again, you can see, you get back to base. Uh, you take some time to shop. Uh, but Mauzar is already up back on the map. Ma Mashi is invading their jungle all by himself while the entire enemy team's alive. But you just got back to base. You then spend yeah, 20, 30 more seconds trying to decide what to buy, wasting time that you could be on the map. Wow, you have to spend longer than I thought. Uh, so you spend about a minute in base. Probably like 30 seconds. Uh, but again, you spend so long in base and not resetting sooner that this fight's going on before you're even out on the map. And yeah, like, here's the argument. They shouldn't have gone in without me, which is true. They shouldn't have. There's also the thing of you wasted so much time that this kind of just happened without you. And they both die. I, st I don't think you being there would have impacted that, but it's also one of the things of you can ping it or anything. So far, I haven't really seen you communicating that much with the team unless that ping's turned off. Uh, even just through pings. Split pushing pings is one of the main ways uh, I deal with it. And again, you go top lane, your TP's up. You should be bot lane pressuring it. Next Dragon's in Infernal, you can be grouped up for that. Uh, again, the last time y'all grouped up as five, y'all took an in-hip. Uh, you're still 4,000 gold ahead. You're still 3,000 gold, personally, ahead of your lane opponent. Eh, about 4,000, 3.6k. Uh, you need to be bot lane right now, pressuring that. This in-hip's going to be coming back up soon. Uh, which is rough. Y'all kind of wasted the time after getting it, because I think y'all took it at about 1830. Uh, so it's going to be gone before too long. Again, Baron's up, you should be bought. You can group for things like Infernal, but for higher priority things that take longer, like Baron, you can just uh, So again, the entire team wants to be top lane. Baron's top lane, they're more than happy to be here. You splitting here and forcing this fight. You get uh, I don't believe you die yourself, or you can just get the juice through your uh, wall. Uh, yeah, you keep trying to fight here, you do a little dance, and then you wall him off, but he's still in the you can dodge it. And then you, uh, yeah. And that was your big threat. Boom. Thousand gold out the window, you just gave a thousand gold to Jin. Uh, the gold gap just shrinked by a thousand. He's gonna be able to get his next item. The game just got a lot of so. He dies, unfortunately. Again, if you were bottling, that wouldn't have happened. Uh... They don't bear it, I believe, although they could have been one of these two. Then your Mazar dies as a follow up, pretty much. Guard almost dies again. And again, you go top lane. So, three times now in a row, you've split top lane. Two of them you've had TP. One of them you didn't have TP because you wasted earlier TP into a lane. All three of these times you get them in bot lane. And this is basically a free infernal for them because your Mazar is now dead. Because he died afterwards. Again, it's partly his fault for going in afterwards, but you set up the bad fight to begin with. Again. So here you TP bot lane to a Baron that you probably, to a Dragon you probably can't contest. Uh, and now you won't have TP for Baron. Again, like, if you are going to pick him, like, you walk into the uh, Y'all do end up getting the pick on Misfortune here, but I think that's all you get. No, you all got three kills here. So right now I'm looking for a Baron. Uh, Master's low HP, that's fine. These three are all low HP. Uh, it's rough because Jin and Sonar are the ones alive. They can clean up. But this is a free Baron. Three are dead. Their jungle, 30, 40 seconds. Uh, worst case scenario, y'all could probably, or like best case scenario, y'all could probably end the game here. Gather the minions and push them mid. But that's not the most likely thing to happen. Uh, but still, it's better to try to go for Baron and make that call. Uh, I have to get picks as late in the game than it is to try and uh, slip off. Again, they're low HP and they try to sit here and this is all the shot. You get one turret. So after getting this turret, uh, you have a very limited amount of time before they've cleared the wave and started moving back up. You spend that time taking red buff. Uh, instead of taking red buff, you could have gone up here uh, and tried to make a play. Again, I would have gone for Baron sooner. Uh, maybe you can get a pick up here with everybody here. Uh, but after you take this red buff, you are out of time. They are done clearing the wave. You need to go and pressure again. It's also very unfortunate that you wasted your remaining down here. Kind of like you threw away your ult. It's going to die. Uh, yeah, so once they clear this wave... Uh, once they clear this wave, they immediately going to come back up top. Uh, so at this point, you've lost all the time you have. You need to be going back down here and split again. If they send three people again down just for you, then your team can 4v2. And when one of those two is definitely a Mumu, it's very likely that your team can basically form in a Zed. As said, you group up with the team, and at this point, after the throw, after you gave up your 1,000 gold bounty, even though you still got a 600 gold bounty, if you give up your 1,000 gold bounty after the like events of death that shortened the gold gap between y'all, then you're going to have a little bit of a rough time. Especially because the enemy team is Sona, Mumu, uh, Misfortune. 
their AOE CC and uh, AOE damage. It's kind of rough. But we'll see here. Your Master Yi is recalling. You don't look at your map. The same way the Mauzahar didn't look at the map to see you were still in base. And you guys try to force a fight here. You walk during the pickup thinking, I'm 7 and 1, I can 1v9. Sadly, it's not honestly that easy. You've got 12,000 gold by yourself, but just two of them have 17,000. Like, it's actually a lot rougher. And the more enemies there are, the faster you get to go down. You can't do this. So you get caught out here. There's a sonar hole. Big sonar hole. Of course, you get bopped. Y'all, this is going to be a good fight. Uh, this is a 44. Jin wasn't there, Master Yi wasn't there. Uh, just in general, to begin with, just splitting bot to begin with, might have matured an earlier Baron. But again, they still don't Baron here. Uh, they probably could have, realistically, but they were scared to 4v1. Don't know why, that's their problem. Uh, he gets killed on Misfortune, that's fine. Uh, Misfortune is now dead, their AD carry is now dead, y'all can look for a Baron. Uh, she has TP, which is rough. She's still, she's still kind of easy to kill. Y'all can look for a Baron here. Uh, but something else to note is your TP is still halfway down, and there's a fat wave down here. You gotta grab it eventually, but you won't be able to respond. So this is when I'm telling my team to back off. Uh, so I go down here and I can get kicked off. Fortunately, again, like I said, that is your bot line is set up here. We'll put it in a 5v5. It's a 4v5 because you went bot to collect all that farm with that Baron. Now, hopefully, you can get a tower. That's the tower. They still don't get Baron here. Wow. They really should have. So the enemy team's giving me more than enough time. Uh, I'm sorry, fast forward. I'm kind of just going to the Again, this is a good Baron for y'all. Y'all got three picks. Y'all lost. Uh, here it looks like you ran away. You are your team's big damage. Uh, so yeah, for no reason, like you want to chase Zed. You are not mobile enough to catch them by yourself. There's no reason to try chasing them. Your best bet is just burning down the Baron. There's nothing you can do. If you have been hitting this Baron this whole time, you'd probably be around like 2,000 HP by now. You all have to chase them. You offer to punish so much to go around, but you spent this whole time. Again, although you're chasing the Zed, at any time you can use it. You basically spend that time in the end Now the enemy can group up again. You're in a 1v3 because these two are so far back. You're going to get chunked. Even though there's things that can't it doesn't matter. Vardis just needs to give shit up. Vard dies, and then trades one for one. This time, things are looking tough. They're going to get Baron. Things are not looking too good. In this situation, if you know they're getting Baron, uh, the best thing you can do is either A, trade another inhib for it. Uh, yeah, they ping to defend it. Uh, trade an inhib for the Baron to force them off it. Or be at the very least clear the waves around Baron. That way they can't turn that Baron into an instant tower. Uh, instead, you walked all the way back to base. Uh, and this tower by itself took half its HP just for minions. So at this point, the game's kind of been thrown. It's kind of a 50 50, but y'all are in a tough spot where they have Baron and you have two open in hips. It's not going to look pretty, especially when y'all have already been losing 5v5s. So I'm going to stop this here. Uh, so, two main notes that were thrown. Uh, so, three main notes. A. If you're going to keep somebody pushed in, do something on the map with it. Uh, get wards down, invade their jungle, roam mid, something. If you're not going to be doing anything like that, just let them push out and look for kills. Uh, B is, if you have a lead like this, group with your team. Like, when you're... How should I say this? Uh, when you have enough kills like this, walk mid with your team, see if there's anything you can get done. If there's nothing you can get done, go to a side lane. Uh, and typically go to the side lane either... Right next to the objective that's easy, easy to take, like dragons are super easy to secure. You secure them in 10 seconds, uh, it won't cost you that much time. Or opposite of objectives that are hard to take. Elder Dragon, uh, Baron, take a while to take, give you enough time to TP to a fight if one breaks out. A dragon easily die in the time it takes to TP, but uh, Baron not so much. And three, whenever you're done with the fight, reset as soon as possible so you can get back out on the map as soon as possible. And spend as little time as possible in base. You want to be the thing about split pushing is you have to be putting down constant pressure, and if you're spending time AFK in base or just kind of wandering around the map with nothing to do, then you're giving the enemy time to catch up on the map. I suppose lastly, uh, like the part with the red buff before the Baron, uh, if you've just pushed in a wave, you only have limited time uh, before they clear it and can walk up to match you. If you spend that time doing something, 
uh, like taking red buff or taking raptors and krugs then you have to expect that when you go to group that they'll be there too because you spent that tempo that you built clearing the wave to uh, do something now and now you've lost that advantage you're all kind of even in time I hope that makes sense to the end uh, I can explain it more later but I'm going to call it here hopefully all this audio recorded uh, I'll finish recording put it into a YouTube video send it to you uh, if you have any questions feel free just to ask and I'm more than happy to do this anytime I'm pretty happy with how the uh, notes turned out most of them, again, I focus on landing phase or in the first 10 minutes of building a lead. And then the rest of it were just the throws after when it came to splitting. I didn't cover anything in particular about team fighting or your positioning on that because it just gets a little too nitpicky and I don't want you to worry about that for now. Uh, yeah, that's it.